Louisiana. She's the exception and never the rule. She's a mystery that asks not to be solved, but simply to be experienced. Louisiana, Louisiana where you can come as you are and leave different. Whether you're planning a Louisiana convention, family reunion, or a southern vacation, the Louisiana Association of Convention and Visitors Bureaus connects you to information sources throughout the state. The Louisiana Association of Convention and Visitors Bureaus. The Baton Rouge Area Convention and Visitors Bureau welcomes you and yours to Baton Rouge, Louisiana's state capital. From the old governor's mansion to fabulous dining and Zydeco dancing, Baton Rouge, authentic Louisiana at every turn. Popeye's Chicken and Biscuits, featuring Cajun-style chicken, red beans and rice, and buttermilk biscuits, all flavored by the memories and imaginations of Louisiana chefs. Popeye's Chicken and Biscuits, committed to preserving Louisiana's flavor heritage. Here in Louisiana, we have a saying, we don't eat to live, we live to eat. And y'all, that could have a double meaning. In every Bayou Village and home we visited, we found one thing to be true. Although all of our dishes taste great, they're not all good for us. So my mission today is to take our time-honored recipes and make them a little healthier for us. I'm Chef John Falls. Welcome to Louisiana Cooking with a Change of Heart. All right. How y'all doing? Nice to have you. Hey, sweetheart. <laughs> How y'all? Hey, Louise. Turn on me. I think I got lipstick, huh? Oh, I got it <laughs> Y'all, welcome. So nice to have you here. Thanks so much. For, hey, nice to have y'all in my home kitchen. I tell you what, what, what great cooks I'm looking at, too. Oh, my God, I'm in trouble today, huh? Y'all, let me introduce y'all to Sharon Jesselcheck. Sharon is the reason we're all here today. Not only does she work here on the show all the time, but at the same time, she submitted to me one of Louisiana's great traditional recipes. We call it in French, fromage de tête de cochon, or in English, hogshead cheese. Hogshead, sounds nice and healthy, right? Yeah. Huh? Well, hogshead cheese is one of the greatest, I would say one of the oldest recipes that every Cajun and Creole family in New Orleans uh, sought to make during the uh, bushery or the, uh, har or the killing of the pigs in the wintertime. And it's a great, great dish around the holidays. So I went over to Sharon's house and uh, she showed me her recipe, how to make it. My job today, y'all, to modify just a little bit to take some of the fats out and make it a little bit healthier for us. And we took a trip over to the meat market, to yes, Porsche's Meat Market, yes, and did. Donald gave us a little uh, lesson in cutting the pig, too. So, y'all, why don't you uh, join us over there and see what we learned, or I should say what I learned from two great cooks that day. Well, we had a wonderful time, huh? Well, y'all, here we are with Donald Portion, his country meat market in French Settlement, Louisiana. This area was settled by the French and Germans back in the 18th century, so many of their food traditions are alive and well here. I love these country meat markets for one reason. They are still ready and able to produce any specialty cut of meat to fill your needs, and that's possible because this type of market still butchers on the daily basis, and the whole carcass is available should you need it. Where else could I go to get the head and feet of a pig, two main ingredients needed for the hogshead cheese? I'll brush this before I put them in the pot. <laughs> Let me take a look at that. Oh. Oh, yeah. After the pork shanks are cut, Donald splits the hooves in two, exposing the marrow and fatty center imperative to creating the natural gelatin needed today. And of course, y'all, since I'm here already, why not pick up, you know, a couple of rolls, maybe one from the ham, and the other a great picnic shoulder. Mm, mm, mm. Well, Donald, like most country butchers, always happy to share a few quick tips on butchering. And cooks like me are always happy to receive them. There's a term here in Cajun country called lanyap, which means a little something extra. Well, Sharon and I were both able to pick up a couple of bags of a little something extra before taking off to her kitchen to create this great regional favorite. Oh, I tell you, we hit, we hit Ted here. Sharon's lived her entire life in French Settlement where she resides on the land where her family settled over a hundred years ago. 
In fact, her log home was built totally with timbers cut from the property, and every board used on her kitchen cabinets was hand-selected from the land. To create the hogshead cheese, Sharon first selects the pieces needed for the boiling pot. She begins with the feet, which of course adds the gelatin, and then follows with the meteor cuts. This gives the cheese its body. Later, a full array of seasonings are added, brought to a rolling ball reduced to simmer where it cooks until the meat is tender about two hours. This gives Sharon and I ample time to go out into the herb garden to hand pick all of the fresh seasonings necessary to flavor the dish. Because Sharon lives on about 25 acres, she has more than enough room to grow anything the cook needs. And y'all, you'll certainly find it all right here. Once the meat is tender, it's deboned and then ground using that old meat grinder that's been handed down in Sharon's family over the years. The stock is strained, returned to the pot, and tested for flavor. Naturally, at this time, all of the fresh seasonings are added back to the pot along with all of that great ground pork. Look at these fresh, beautiful seasonings here out of the garden. Mm -hmm. I wish you could smell this. It's then all brought back to a simmer, and then you want to test it one more time for seasoning and spice. It's then, of course, placed in molds, and there's all types of different molds. Here it goes into the refrigerator to be chilled overnight. When it's totally set, the cheese may be presented as an appetizer course or as an hors d'oeuvre for parties or family get-togethers. You're going to love this. Sharon, thanks so much for that fantastic lesson in uh, hogshead cheese making. Now tell me, where did that meat grinder come from? That was my great-grandfather's meat grinder. Now how, how old is that grinder? That was a beautiful grinder. Oh, it's only about 120-something years old. Yeah, 123 and a half years old. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sharon, welcome, and I want to introduce uh, Chef uh, Louis Jesselcheck as well. Now, now you were a pastry chef originally. Yes. Louis is still a chef at our Lady of the Lake Regional Medical Center. In fact, not only chef, but food service director. Hey, two good cooks in one family. Who, who gets the ownership of the stove in the house? I do. <laughs> and, that, and, and that includes cleaning. Oh, can okay, you do the cooking and the cleaning? Cleaning. And y'all, right next to these two uh, great people, of course, Roland and Freddie Smith. Now, you're across the street neighbors from them, right? Is that there any advantages to that when it comes to cooking and eating? Yes. Uh, uh, a little bit? <laughs> well, look, y'all, I'm going to actually have y'all, as I cook a couple uh, pieces of food here, I'm going to have y'all send it to the audience for me. You don't mind doing that, huh? You're, yeah, well, you can sample for it. Yeah, kind of kind of work for your food. Now, now, y'all, let me introduce Rex here because Rex is my camera guy who's going to be in, in the pots. He's the sous chef on the show, so he's going to be all over the place, and y'all uh, welcome Rex here. Uh, and one other very important person, y'all, Donald Porsche, and Donald is sitting right there. Rex, I want you to take a look at Donald right there. You see him? See him with the hat on his head? There he is. Donald's the guy. He's the be best old-time butcher shop I know. He's from French Settlement, and Donald, thanks so much for everything you do for us. <laughs> now, now, Sharon, I want to start this. I want to talk a little bit about some things, but let me get this started first. Now, when you did the hogshead cheese, you actually, we went to get the meat, and then you boil it, and, and then you took the, the, the stock and the natural gelatin in the stock actually created the hogshead cheese. I'm going to change that a little bit. Let me show you uh, what I'm doing here. Now, Rex, if we take a look at all of the different options we have here, here's the hogshead, of course, and there's all the gelatin from the bones here as well as the uh, feet. Uh, you notice all the natural fat here, and of course, this is the gelatin here, and in the skin, that's ultimately going to give us what we need to set this hogshead cheese, a natural gelatin. And here again, but look at the fat on this, uh, on this meat. You can imagine when we in Louisiana eat this type of thing every single day, hey, we are what we eat, right, y'all? Huh? We are what we eat. Huh? Well, you know where this is going. So what I'm doing, I'm taking some of the leaner cuts of meat, like the little thin cut pork chops, I'm boiling those, I'm taking the loin of the pork, which is nice and lean, 
and I'm boiling that, and then I'm just going to use a little gelatin to set it. But look at all the other options I have here, Rex, for flavor. All of the natural spices, the peppers, the garlic, the shallots, all of these wonderful onions, even a lot of color in the hogshead cheese, purple and yellow bell peppers. I tell you, I love cooking in Louisiana, y'all, because the options are just too many to even think about. So now, Sharon, what I'm going to do, instead of just beginning by boiling uh, the meat, I'm going to begin by sauteing in a little bit of olive oil all of the vegetables that's ultimately going to go into the dish. And I'll tell you what I did with my meat uh, here in just a second. So into the uh, pot of little onions. Oh, yeah, I got to get onions, oh, right, y'all, huh? Oh, oh, yeah, you got to start the onions. A little celery on, huh? A little celery because now you put onions and celery in yours but in the stock. In the stock. I'm going to saute mine first because I want to kind of render out, if I'm pulling out, a lot of the fat in the dish, y'all, I need to try to build on flavor. So I build on flavor by sauteing my vegetables first to pull out the natural sugars in these vegetables and give me added flavor to replace that fat. A little garlic, y'all like garlic, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, a lot of it here, a lot of it here. Oh, yeah. Well, a little more since y'all like it so much. Now, if you look down into the pot, you can see how just how much, uh, how nice all of those colors are coming together. And of course, by sauteing them in olive oil, we're going to have just a little bit more flavor. Now, I want to take this big platter of meat here uh, that I have because I want to show Rex what I've done. Now, let's take a look at this. Here's the nice lean meat. And I took it and I trimmed most of the fat off. This is pork. Of course, you can use chicken or turkey to make this dish as well. You don't have to use pork. I boil it, and after I boil it, as Sharon did, I ground the loin of pork. I use pork loin here to get this nice, uh, delicate white meat with uh, all, most of the fat removed. So I'm going to put this into the pot in just a second. But most importantly, I want to show you all this. I defatted the stock, y'all. By doing this a night, uh, the, the day ahead of time and put it in the refrigerator overnight, in that fat cap that still had a lot of pork fat, I removed it and tossed it out, but I kept all of the great pork flavor. So this is going to go in the pot next. Now, uh, Sharon, the boucherie, as we call it, the butchering of the pig, has been a part of French settlement in most of the little Cajun villages forever. I'm sure your family, your mom and dad, and all of them who live in that area probably did boucheries and hogshead cheese for generations, Generation, huh? Generations, yeah. And uh, did they raise their own? Now, you have pigs in your own yard today. <laughs> I, yes, yes, but they're not for hogshead cheese. <laughs> They're not for hogs and cheese. Hard, no. uh, well, I tell you what, you have some. Uh, you have the pot belly pig yes, running. Uh, they it. probably make some pretty good cheese, I judging from the size of the size of the <laughs> head. You can make some good cheese. Okay, but uh, yeah, and even the little town of Sorrento, huh, Louis? Uh, Sorrento, right next door to French Settlement, uh, is the uh, capital of uh, Louisiana and the crackling the, the, capital too. Yeah, the of cook off, the, the cook -off. crackling cook off. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now you and I had a fun conversation about uh, the the name of the town, French Settlement. We, uh, I said, yeah. was that where all the French originally settled? What did you say? <laughs> well, I, I think that's where the uh, French uh, women, uh, uh, the German men settled in French settlement. And I think they went across the river, got some of the French women, and they only speak French right. in French settlement. I think it was like dictated down. <laughs> so French. the women. <laughs> yeah, kind of okay, well, look. Now, y'all, Rex, into the pot. My vegetables are sauteed, so now I have extra flavor. So now I'm going to put... My nice stock, oh, beautiful stock down in here, defatted stock, right into the pot. Now, Sharon, I'm going to throw in my green onions. Oh, yeah, I got to yeah. put in my green onions. Beautiful, huh? Uh, Y'all, it's all about flavor. And you got to pile on the good stuff here. You got to pile on all the good stuff. Now, Rex, here we go. Ready? Look at all that great, fresh, cooked pork with all that beautiful flavor that we cooked in that au jus, the same way Sharon did a minute ago, that nice stock. I'm going to put it down in here. You see how nice and lean that pork loin is, too. Very little, very little fat here, but we still have all of the flavors of the original dish. We didn't, we didn't eliminate anything except a whole bunch of fat, y'all. That's all we did. So we're piling on the good stuff here. Now, as far as for seasoning, y'all, what? I guess a little hot sauce, right? Huh? A lot of hot oh, yeah. sauce, probably. Oh, yeah, a lot of hot sauce here. Oh, yeah. Well, maybe a little, uh, maybe a little pepper here, right? Uh, a little bit of that right there, and a little bit of 
the uh, salt substitute. And y'all, whenever I use salt substitute, remember, it's always nice to season the food again right before you serve it with salt substitute to give it that added uh, salt flavor. So you want to do that. And then, of course, uh, herbs. I'm going to put basil. I'm going to put thyme. You put a lot of herbs in yours as well. So I'm going to put a little bit more herbs down in here. Now, of course, the colors are going to come together nicely here. And as you can see all the colors. Now, I would cook this for probably about another 30 to 40 minutes for this to really marry well. All of these great flavors right here. And y'all, once they come together, then I'm gonna go ahead and mold it. Now, oh, oh how can I mold it without gelatin? Oh, I don't have the fat, y'all, so you know what I did? Just unflavored gelatin. This is uh, all you need to, uh, to mold this cheese. You see how thick it is? I just put about three packs. Well, it depends on how much liquid you have. Just go ahead and put it down uh, in the pot and make sure it's blended in here really nicely so the, the uh, uh, unflavored gelatin will mold this. And now I can do one of two things. We can use the uh, egg crates. Yeah, what you get your eggs in the store, they make nice cocktail size hogshead cheese. Or you can use the same one that Sharon used here. This really nice uh, little, uh, look at that, I'll just give you an example of it here. Uh, you can see all the meat gone in here. And you want to get a lot of meat down in it like this, and then, of course, get that nice juice as well and put it in here. And I think you have the general idea. And then you just put it in the refrigerator, as she did, and let it sit there overnight. It's just going to be fantastic. And let me show you what it looks like, y'all, when it's all said and done. I have some already molded here. Take a look at that. And since I'm using lean pork loin, uh, you can use chicken or, uh, or as I mentioned, turkey, Defatted stock, low sodium too. I cut the fat out of here 36%, y'all. And of course, the, uh, the uh, uh, sodium, 79% less. So that's mine right there. Now, Sharon, you have some right in front of you right there. Let me see that. Hey, Rex, take a look at this. I stole her mold. You see that? Now, this is the one that's, uh, that uh, is made with all the natural fat. And of course, the one you were just looking at over there has uh, just gelatin in it, but all of the same great flavors. So, for Sharon, I'm going to... Now, what about those hog crackers you have here? Talking oh, about the yeah. crackling. Hey, Rex, you like hog crackling? Mm, I bet yeah. you do. Eat some of that, huh? <laughs> Eat some. Huh? Huh? Hey, y'all want to taste this? Go taste ahead. that hog crackling there, huh? Come on, who wants a crackling here, huh? There you go. Yeah, there, you go. there you go, hog crackling. Who wants them? There you go. Right there. A little hog crackling from the Bush Reef Festival, y'all. Oh, you wanted one, too. Okay. I, hey, no problem. There you go. <laughs> All right, y'all. So, so that's done right here. And, of course, you can see how nice that is in full flavor, too. And, my, and remember, y'all, moderation in everything. Moderation in everything. And, by the way, those hog crackling right there, that's the skin of the pig that's been fried to create the lard. And in the old days, of course, we used to add a little meat on some of them. And I think... Donald still does that too, right? You still, add, you still add a little meat to your crackling, right? You don't give us just fat anymore, huh? <laughs> Rex, you see, uh, Rex, you see that beautiful face in the blue, uh, uh, blue shirt in the back of the room there? I see her way back there. I want to introduce everybody to Dawn, y'all, because she's another person who works full time on the show and getting all these great dishes ready, and she's in the audience relaxing right now. Huh? <laughs> huh? 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 <laughs> All right, now y'all, now one of the most important desserts of Louisiana. People get sick of hearing the term bread pudding, but I tell you what, bread pudding is magnificent when done right. I first met Sharon Jesselshek when she was working at a restaurant on the river outside of French Settlement, and I ate there one day and tasted the most magnificent bread pudding I had ever put in my mouth. And I asked the waiter, I said, I have to meet the person who made this cake. True story, right? True story. True story. So you came out and you said, is anything uh, wrong? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Huh? Yep. Is anything wrong? And I said, no, everything's right. I have to have the recipe for this bread pudding. So I met Sharon that day, and then I met Louie a while later, and then we became the closest of friends over Louisiana bread pudding. And still cooking together. And still cooking together. I tell you what, see, bread pudding brought us together, y'all. Huh? <laughs> Let me show you what we put in our bread pudding here, beginning with the gorgeous French bread, y'all. Oh, beautiful French bread right here. And, of course, not many people in Louisiana, not many people outside of Louisiana can get the type of bread we get from the French bakeries here in Louisiana. Yard eggs, Rex. See these nice yard eggs? Uh, this nice brown color, the golden yellow yolks, the gorgeous. And then, of course, for bread pudding, you need milk and a little bit 
uh, vanilla here. And look at the different sugars. We have the dark brown sugar here. We have the light brown sugar from the sugar mills of Louisiana. We're the sugar state, and this sugar just has less molasses in this. And of course, white sugar, nutmeg, cinnamon, pecans all over the place. And Rex, this is what the cake looks like when it's done. Now, oh, doesn't that look good? Huh? Uh, you know what I'm talking about, Rex? <laughs> that looks good. I'm going to come back and finish it in a second, but let me show you how we make it. Now, y'all, I'm going to begin with this gorgeous bowl right here. Oh, I tell you, this bowl. Oh, isn't that beautiful? That's a beautiful old bowl. Now, into this, I'm going to put, y'all, egg substitute. Egg substitute right there. Egg substitute, 99% egg whites with a little bit of... Uh, Yellow food, yellow food coloring, that's it. Huh? Sugar, we're the sugar state. A little sugar in there, right, Sharon? That's it. All right, y'all, uh, vanilla. Oh, yeah, that's, that's oh, it. it. Vanilla is just vanilla beans that have been steeped in bourbon or vodka or gin, or, and that's how you make homemade vanilla. Just really beautiful. I'm putting two tablespoons in here. <laughs> There it is right there. Now I'm going to whisk that around Sharon. You notice this old whip you gave me this for Christmas one year. And y'all, the bread pudding cake, I'm using, as I said, uh, egg substitute, evaporated skim milk. So I have 50% of the fat in this recipe, 97% cholesterol free. So that's going in. And then, let me see, i got to put a little bit of cinnamon and nutmeg in here. And then milk. And I think you can see what I'm doing here. I'm making just a good vanilla custard, right? It's a nice custard here. I'm going to... By the way, did y'all pass some of that homestead cheese around, huh? huh? Did y'all pass some of that? What? What are y'all doing to me? You got to get that food. I thought, I, pro I thought y'all promised me you were going to pass the food around. Look, in Louisiana, you can use your fingers. Huh? <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, yeah, y'all pass a couple of those around. There you go. No, don't rush, y'all. Just take your time. Right? <laughs> now, y'all, a little evaporated skim milk here. A little evaporated skim milk into my uh, bowl here. And then, of course, now I have all of the things I need to create my bread pudding cake. So, Rex, you ready here? Yep. You notice in the bottom of my bowl, look right. Well, I'll tell you what. Let me do this. It might be easier for you, Rex, if I move my bowl right here. This right here. You notice I put a layer of bread on the bottom of this baking dish. And I even fill in all the little gaps so I'm going to put a few more little pieces of raisins down here, and then some pecans as well down in it, and then some of that beautiful custard. Now, Sharon, that's the way we do it, right? Now, of course, y'all, the evaporated skim milk. I'm sorry, Sharon, what was that? You, that's correct. The evaporated skim milk, y'all, in the egg substitute really cuts out, as I said, 50% of the fat in this recipe. Can you imagine it? Now, you use the tip of your fingers to mash the egg yolk just like this into the bread pudding, and then you continue. You just continue three layers all the way up to the top, and y'all, hey, don't be bashful on the custard. Get a lot of custard in here, okay? And so you get it 350 degree oven, y'all. You just keep stacking it up until you get to the end. And Rex, let's go back to the one that we had here just now on the counter, because I'm gonna finish it for you here. There's, there's the baked cake, and then I'm gonna put a little English cream Creme anglaise all the way around that cake. Rex, you with me? Mm -hmm. Oh, you with me, Rex? Oh. Yeah. yeah, I bet you are, Rex. <laughs> okay, y'all, let's go to the next dishes here because we're doing the cooking of boucherie. And boucherie, of course, the, uh, uh, the, the, the killing and the preparing of all of the great dishes from the pig. Look at these ribs here, y'all. My pork ribs and sherry. I use low-fat sausage right here. And, of course, no salt added tomato sauce in my, uh, in my uh, glaze. I've cut the fat 25% using the little baby back ribs here. And the sodium using salt substitute, 82% in those ribs. You can eat ribs anytime you want. Remember moderation, though, y'all. Just go ahead and eat it as you like. And look at the little meat pies next door. Come on, Rex, you want to eat them in the camera. <laughs> oh, y'all, look at the pork meat pies. Lean pork loin, 6% fat ground beef I've added here. Egg substitute in the batter, and of course, uh, uh, evaporated skim milk in the dough here. 65% less fat in this recipe. 77% less cholesterol. Why don't you take a bite into that right there, huh? Y'all take, who wants a meat pie? Huh? Uh, I know who wants a meat pie. I know who wants a meat pie. Huh? 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 Who wants a meat pie? Huh? Uh, who wants a meat pie? I have two of them. Don't Who wants one? Huh? Come on. There's a meat Yay. pie. Huh? Huh? Pork? 
That's a meat pie. Yeah. <laughs> hey, y'all, who says mama's cooking can be healthy, huh? Hey, Sharon, thanks so much. <laughs> hey, y'all, I'm gonna feed you because I love all of you. You know what I mean? Thank y'all. Hey. <laughs> Louisiana. She's the exception and never the rule. She's a mystery that asks not to be solved, but simply to be experienced. Louisiana, Louisiana where you can come as you are and leave different. Whether you're planning a Louisiana convention, family reunion, or a southern vacation, the Louisiana Association of Convention and Visitors Bureaus connects you to information sources throughout the state. The Louisiana Association of Convention and Visitors Bureaus. The Baton Rouge Area Convention and Visitors Bureau welcomes you and yours to Baton Rouge, Louisiana's state capital. From the old governor's mansion to fabulous dining and Zydeco dancing, Baton Rouge, authentic Louisiana at every turn. Popeye's Chicken and Biscuits, featuring Cajun-style chicken, red beans and rice, and buttermilk biscuits, all flavored by the memories and imaginations of Louisiana chefs. Popeye's Chicken and Biscuits, committed to preserving Louisiana's flavor heritage. Something old and something new. Louisiana Cooking with a Change of Heart is available for $29.95. This companion book to the television series features over 150 recipes. To order, please call 1-800-973-7246 or send check or money order to the address shown on your screen. A Taste of Louisiana. Louisiana Cooking with a Change of Heart is available for $19.95. This VHS video contains one episode of Chef John Fultz's new television series. Please send check or money order to the address on your screen and mention the show number with your order. <laughs> 